antepartum hemorrhage. By definition, antepartum hemorrhage is defined as a bleeding from the genital tract occurring from 24 weeks of pregnancy until the birth of the child, and some definition use 20 weeks of pregnancy. The incidence is between 2 to 5 percent of all pregnancies. Regarding the major causes of antepartum hemorrhage can be divided into placental causes, unexplained and extra placental causes. The placental causes, which represent 70% of cases including placenta previa, abruptio placenta, and vasa previa. The unexplained represent 25% and there is no reason found. The extra placental causes, including rupture uterus and glocal, a lesion in the cervix or vagina like cervical polyp, carcinoma of the cervix, varicose vein, and local trauma. This is what we call it, vasa previa, which is one of the causes of placental causes of antepartum hemorrhage. Here, there will be vessel passing in front in the membrane, in front of the presenting part of the fetus. So, when they do artificial rupture of the membrane, they will be injured or there will be injury to these vessel which causes severe bleeding and this type of antepartum hemorrhage associated with a lot of uh, death to the fetus and it is difficult to diagnose. Also uterine rupture is one of the extra placental causes of antepartum hemorrhage. This due to weakness in the uterus, difficult labor and the weakness, by weakness we mean there is scar in the uterus, previous cesarean section scar or previous myomectomy scar with difficult labor lead to rupture of the uterus. The first causes is placenta previa. By definition, placenta previa is placenta that is partially or wholly implanted into the lower uterine segment. As you know, the placenta should be in the fundal region, so if it is lie in the lower uterine segment, we call it placenta previa. And you can see this photo, which represents the normal placenta and placenta previa. And you know the uterus is divided into upper uterine segment and lower uterine segment. The first photo, you can see the placenta in the upper uterine segment in the fundal region, and in the other photo, the placenta in the lower uterine segment and below the presenting part of the body, of the baby, sorry, and we call it placenta previa. Now, the incidence of placenta previa, in early pregnancy, the incidence is very high, it is about 5%, and it is called low-lying placenta. But, in late pregnancy, or in the third trimester, the incidence will become only 0.5%. This means just one patient in every 200 pregnant women. Why this decrease in the incidence? This is due, or this means that more than 90% of low-lying placenta return to normal position. This is due to what is called placental migration. And placental migration doesn't mean the placenta migrate, but it is due to growth of lower uterine segment, and subsequently the placenta will be higher up. And this diagram shows the, what is the mechanism of placental migration. There will be growth of the lower uterine segment and atrophy in the lower edge of the placenta and hypertrophy in the upper edge of the placenta. Now what are predisposing factors for placenta previa? Number one, if the patient have previous cesarean section and the incidence of placenta previa increasing with the number of caesarean section. This means that patients with two or three caesarean section have more incidence of placenta previa than patients without caesarean section or with one caesarean section. Also, if the patient have myomectomy scar, and by myomectomy we mean removal of uterine fibroid. Number two, if the patient have previous placenta previa, there will be four to eight percent chance of recurrence. Number three, previous abortion, especially induced abortion. Number four, multiparity. Number five, multiple pregnancy. Number six, advanced maternal age. Number seven, if the patient or the, if there is abnormal presentation like transverse lie 
or a bridge presentation. And last is if the patient is smoking, also there will be increase in the incidence of placenta preview. Now the classification or the type or degree of placenta preview, they divided or the divided into four types: type one, type two, type three, and type four. In type one, the placenta uh, re occur or reaching the uh, lower uterine segment, but doesn't reach the internal os. And you can see the uh, figure below. This circle represent the cervix and the internal os. So the placenta doesn't reach the internal os. Type two, the placenta reaching the cervix and reaching the internal os, but doesn't cover it. And you can see also in the circle below, the this pinpoint uh, represent the internal os, the, the placenta reaching the internal os, but doesn't cover it. Type three, the placenta cover the internal os, but partially cover the internal os, but not on full dilatation. And type four, the placenta completely cover the cervix and the internal os, and it is called central placenta preview. Type one and type two called minor placenta preview. Type three and four called major placenta preview. And this classification is important regarding the management of patient with placenta preview. Now the complication of antipartum hemorrhage divided into maternal and fetal complication. Maternal complication including anemia due to frequent blood loss, infection, maternal shock, renal failure due to renal tubular necrosis, DIC, postpartum hemorrhage, prolonged hospital stay, psychological sequelae, complication of blood transfusion, and the major risky complication is what is called placenta previa accreta, and this is due to invasion of the placental tissue inside the myometrium of the uh, uterus and this is would be very difficult in delivery to deliver the placenta especially if the patient have previous cesarean section and sometime may need hysterectomy to save the life of the patient regarding fetal complication include fetal hypoxia growth restriction prematurity because we sometimes obligate to deliver the patient regardless gestational age and number four fetal death now, how patient with placenta previa present? The typical presentation is causeless, painless, and recurrent bright red vaginal bleeding in the third trimester. So, causeless, painless, and recurrent bright red vaginal bleeding in the third trimester. Sometimes patient sleeping and she develop attack of vaginal bleeding. But we have to remember, although it is although it is causeless, but sometimes it is precipitated by either digital examination or by sexual intercourse. And although it is painless, but sometimes associated with pain if associated with labor. The other symptom, the fetal movement, are still present after the bleeding in majority of cases. And the third symptom is symptoms due to blood loss, and this depend on the amount of blood loss, uh, which is either mild, moderate, or severe blood loss. The sign, general examination, depend on the degree of blood loss. In severe hemorrhage, there may be shock state, and in chronic, uh, low amount of hemorrhage, the patient will be anemic. By abdominal examination, the uterus the fundal height equal to the period of amenorrhea or correspond to the period of amenorrhea. It is not tender and not hard. It is soft in consistency. And we can easily palpate the fetal part and we can easily listen to the fetal heart. There may be associated malpresentation like transverse lie or breech presentation. And if it is cephalic, we can see or we can find non-engagement of the presenting part. So the important is the uterus correspond to the period of amenorrhea, relaxed and not tender, easy palpable fetal part, easy to listen to the fetal heart. 
We have to know that the general examination is contraindicated in cases of antepartum hemorrhage unless we exclude placenta previa, and if, if it is in doubt, we have to do the general examination in theater with everything ready for cesarean section. Now, what investigation we do to confirm the diagnosis of placenta previa? Ultrasound is the main diagnostic tool or definitive method for diagnosis of placenta previa. Both transabdominal and transvaginal ultrasound scan are accurate method for diagnosis. Also, we have to do hematological investigation like complete blood picture, coagulation screen, and we have to cross match blood. MRI should be considered if we suspect placenta previa accreta or increta, we have to do MRI if we cannot diagnose it by ultrasound. Management. The management of patient with placenta previa depend on the severity of bleeding and the gestational age. So two important points, severity of bleeding and gestational age. To start with, we have to evaluate the severity of bleeding and we have to begin our resuscitation. The severity of bleeding divided into either mild, which represent less than 15% blood loss, moderate 15 to 30%, and severe 30 to 40%. And every type of bleeding associated with a clinical feature, in severe cases there will be shock state, the very hypotension and tachycardia or undetected pulse, and severe pallor. So to start with, we have to do resuscitation. The resuscitation include call for help, two IV line, wide bore cannula. We have to draw blood for blood grooming and cross match two to four pint of blood plus coagulation screen because we say those patients liable for DIC. We should start IV fluid warm, IV fluid like Ringer lactate or normal saline until the availability of blood. In life-saving condition that we cannot wait for blood cross match or specific group cross match, we can give O negative blood in life-saving condition. We have to put Foley's catheter for assessment of renal function because those patients liable for renal failure. And we have sometimes we use CVP and we should monitor the patient until we do the definitive management. So after resuscitation, we have to do definitive management. The definitive management, as we say, depends on gestational age and severity of bleeding. So in cases, number one, if the patient has severe bleeding, we have to deliver the patient by cesarean section regardless to the gestational age. It means we have to save the life of the mother. So, in severe bleeding, cesarean section regardless gestational age, even if the fetus is a preterm. In moderate bleeding, in such cases, we depend on gestational age. If the fetus is mature, that means the gestational age 36 to 37, so we can do delivery of the baby. Otherwise, if the baby is not if the fetus not mature, less than 36 week gestation, in such cases, we have to observe the patient for a few hours observation or for limited time. If the bleeding remain moderate or become severe, in such cases, we have to deliver the patient even if the gestational age less than 36. But if the bleeding stop or become mild bleeding, in such cases, we have to manage by expectant management. Again, moderate bleeding, gestational age more than 36, 37, delivery. Less than 36, 37, monitoring few hours, become, if, if it is remain moderate or severe, delivery. Mild expectant management. So we talk about severe bleeding and moderate bleeding. In cases of mild bleeding also depend on gestational age. If it is more than 36, 37, we have to deliver the patient. The reason is that this mild bleeding may develop or may turn into severe or moderate bleeding, so we have to deliver quickly to avoid such complications. But if the gestational age less than 36, 37, 
So expectant management. Expectant mean we try to prolong the uh, gestational age until the fetus become mature. Now, what we mean by expectant management? Expectant management, we should admit the patient for hospital in the, to the hospital, sorry, for bed rest. We should correct anemia by blood transfusion because there is no time for giving oral or injectable iron because the patient liable for bleeding anytime. Prevention of preterm labor and prevention of if the patient have contraction. And the drug of choice for prevention of preterm labor is magnesium sulfate, other drug calcium channel blocker. And we should avoid beta mimetics because they cause tachycardia and hypotension, which may be masked the symptom of bleeding in placenta previa. Number four, acceleration of fetal lung maturity by either dexamethasone or betamethasone if the gestational age between 28 to 34 week gestation. Number five, some using cervical circulars. Number six, we repeat the ultrasound every two weeks to see whether the placenta remain in position or become normal. And number seven, delivery at 36 to 37 if there is no complication. The route of delivery for type one and type two anterior placenta previa, we can have or we can give chance for vaginal delivery. But for, for grade two, posterior and grade three and grade four or type three and type four, the delivery should be by cesarean section. We have to remember that every patient with antepartum hemorrhage liable for postpartum hemorrhage, so active management of third stage of labor. Thank you.